So after 4,000 shutter counts, I'm finally ready to give you my full review on the Fuji X106. I'm Nicholas Clayton Lee, let's talk about it. So I wanted to give you guys my full thought on this camera. So I did take my time before I decided to post this video and I've reached the 4,000 count pretty quickly because I do a lot of panning shots as well, but I have been using this camera quite a bit. So I wanted to use this camera in different scenarios so I can give you guys a really good review. And I have taken this mainly on street photography in the daytime, at night, in the snow, in the rain as well, as well as BTS for a film and also a portrait shoot. I've also never owned an X100 series camera, nor have I ever used one, so, or even held one. So I'm giving you guys this review as a brand new X100 user. So I'm gonna start off with the looks, and I gotta say, this is probably the best looking camera I have. Very close to my Fuji X-T4. And speaking of the X-T4, one thing that I really like about this is the new aluminum part on Fuji's cameras, at least the top part. If you compare this with my X-T4, you can see the color is a bit different and you can see there's a bit of wear and tear in this where the aluminum part is getting scratched up and it's like finally fading a bit. Whereas this, I don't know if it will fade the same way, but I gotta say I love this finish. This matte finish is so nice and I love how they even have this hot shoe cover. It's the same color. It's so beautiful. And I like how like you can't even see that this is a flip screen. It's so sleek and it just looks like it doesn't even flip out. It's so nice. This is such a nice camera. And even if you look on your Apple emojis, this is exactly what they say a camera should look like and where the flash is too. So this is why you gotta love it. Anyway, this looks wonderful. I even love this lid. I use this every day. I actually take the time to remove the hood that I got from JJC and to put this on just because I love having hoods on my camera just to protect the lenses. Another thing you'll notice right off the bat is the weight of this. I gotta say, I originally thought and I made a video that this was a bit heavy because I did expect it to be a bit lighter, but after using it on the street for like three or four hours each time, and I tend to just use this, this Peak Design strap, and just hang it on my wrist all the time, I gotta say, at the end of the day, I don't even feel anything. Whereas if I use my X-T4 or my X-H2, I would feel the weight. So. This is actually very light for what it can do. And I love how pocketable this camera is. It's very thin, so I can just put this in my jacket pocket and I'm good to go, honestly. But I obviously don't, but it's actually good enough. So something I really want to talk about is how great having a 40 megapixel camera in such a small body is. Like, this is 26 megapixel, this X-T4, and I can still use this professionally. So just imagine this. And even when you zoom in with the digital teleconverter, you can still get 20 megapixels and you can zoom in even more and still 10 megapixels. And with 10 megapixels, it's, trust me, it's good enough for Instagram posts and everything you see online. So it's just amazing how good this sensor is. I always thought that I would not have to upgrade after 40 megapixels because that's why I got the X-H2 because I was thinking even in the future, 40 megapixel is more than enough. I do not need anything more. And now this gives you so much versatility, having to zoom in and you can even do it in post crop uh, 40 megapixel picture and it'll still look really good and sharp. The sensor speed though, I did notice it's a bit slower compared to the X-H2 partnering with the Fuji 23 millimeter 1.4 because I think that's a newer lens and this lens is actually pretty old, but it honestly still works fine, especially when you're pretty close to your subject. Once it's pretty far, you do have to kind of tap the screen to kind of like remind it where you want to focus, but it's still pretty fast and it's still pretty sharp. If I compare these two photos, the photo on the left is taken with the X106, while the other one is taken with the X-H2 with the 23 millimeter f1.4, but the settings are set the same. The photo on the right is a tiny bit sharper, but that's only when it's zoomed in 100%. I think this is mainly due to the lens rather than the camera itself. What's more surprising to me is the color is a bit different. Maybe it's the ND filter, I don't know. 
Something else I want to talk about is image stabilization. So Fujifilm introduced IBIS into the X100 series with this camera and it has a six stop IBIS and using it for video, it's actually pretty good. As you can see, this is shot handheld shooting this slowly and you can't really see that much of a shake. But if you do want to do this, with a selfie stick, I tried it, as you guys can see here. It is a bit shaky, but the footage is still somewhat usable. But because the lens is not wide enough, you'll probably have to get the teleconverter lens to make it wider. But you aren't really supposed to use this as like a vlogging camera. So I understand that as well. But I just want to show you guys the footage of how it looks like. So this can actually shoot at 4K at 60p and it has both F-Log1 and F-Log2 and has 13 stops of dynamic range. And for slow motion, this can shoot at 1080 at 240p. And using this even at handheld with this IBIS on, it looks fantastic. You can barely even see any of my shake. Other things that Fujifilm introduced is Reality Ace film simulation into this camera. I personally do not really use film simulations. I use them, but I tend to just use raw after and just edit because I love editing my photos. I think that's part of it. That's not for everyone, I understand. And there will be new updates for newer cameras like the X-T5, X-H2, and X-H2S. Something else that I personally love is this dial right here. I've actually never used a camera with this dial in front and I changed that to an ND filter. Having a four stop ND filter in here is so good. It's so much more convenient. It just makes you wonder why compact cameras don't have ND filters. ND filters are usually in cinematic cameras, but yeah, like they can put it in the X-H2 if they haven't this, come on. Other things I really like is the flash on this camera. It's actually a lot brighter than I initially thought it would be. This is a photo taken when it's pitch black and you can see it's still really bright and it's very usable. You just have to know that if you have a lens hood like this one right here, you will have to remove the lens hood before you use a flash or else it will cast a shadow in your pictures. So reminder for this camera is to get a filter um, you do need a filter to make this camera weather resistant. I did take it out in the snow and in a bit of a rain and it still worked fine without the filter but if you, it gets pretty harsh you'd want to get a filter and just remember just to remove this initial ring and then add another ring that can attach a filter on and then just you'll be good from there. And I wouldn't really recommend using cheap filters because if it's just gonna be on your camera all the time then you'd want a pretty good filter. I am personally still waiting for my filter to come out, which is the everyday filter from Polar Pro. And they don't come out till April, so can't really go out when it's like very heavy rain right now, which really sucks because I'd love to try and shoot more rain photography with this camera. So after using this camera for three weeks now, there are some things I am personally not a huge fan of. One is the grip, which is an easy fix. I am waiting for a small rig's new L-shaped grip. I think that will be a really nice grip for this camera. And it looks like it bulges us quite a bit, but not as big as where the lens is. So it's not as thick as the lens. But I think like Fujifilm could actually resolve this themselves. Other things that I think Fujifilm could fix is the flip screen. I personally love how this looks. It looks so nice, it doesn't even look like it's a screen that can be flipped. But if Fujifilm can just use the same flip screen as they do on the X-T5 and the X-T3, that would be magnificent. So here's an example of me not being able to see what I'm shooting and I'm sitting on the ground already. And if this can flip vertically towards me, it would make such a huge difference. I think that is the main thing for me that I really didn't like about this camera because I love shooting close to the ground and not being able to see what I'm shooting really, really annoyed me. It was kind of like a shoot and pray there, but my photos did come out great at the end of it. But still, it's just like, it would be a lot nicer if they can just integrate that. And honestly, for the side, all they did was just put a button on it and I can flip it vertically. So something else I think Fujifilm could improve on in the future generation is the battery. Fujifilm still uses the NPW126S battery, which is on the Fuji X-T3 as well as the previous X100V models. And they did allow you, apparently that's what they said, to take more photos. And 
I gotta say, I wasn't as disappointed as I initially thought I would be because my first, like, quick first impression of this camera, the battery really didn't last that long. Maybe it's because I was on the main menu trying to fix things a lot of the time. But this now can probably go for three hours of my way of shooting street photography and it would be pretty good. I tend to have two of these batteries, so I should be able to last for the day. But I think if Fujifilm integrated the newer battery, which they use for pretty much all the newer cameras, including the X-T4, which is a few years old already, I think I would only have to take one battery out. Yeah, going forward, I would also love to see a newer lens, maybe. Uh, maybe something with a bit faster of an autofocus, but I know that with just a software upgrade, the autofocus might be even faster already, so... I'm sure Fujifilm will do that probably in a year. That's what Fujifilm does and it's great. I love Fujifilm for that because you just have a software upgrade and you feel like, oh, you have a newer camera. And I love that about Fujifilm. I'm also able to take this out to shoot BTS and it looked great. The director actually loved the photos and wanted me to go back again. But I can't show you guys the photos because there's a contract agreement until the movie is released then I can show the photos so I did try to use this camera for a quick portrait session outdoor with my friend Aliyah and I used an external flash which I used this on top which is the Godox X Pro this works really well and the photos look really great uh, it's something I really want to try to get the really dark background even though it's daytime and the subject looked really bright and sharp but I also tried this out with my friend just using this camera flash and it still works. So this camera sells for $21.59 Canadian. That's $15.99 US. Is it worth it? I personally think that this camera is actually worth it, especially considering there's a new 40 megapixel sensor and there's IBIS. For a beginner, I definitely think this is a great camera because there's different focal length you can use, especially just digital teleconverter. And using this, that's what I do for the manual focus. Instead of manual focus, I change it to a digital teleconverter. And being able to play around with it gives you a lot more versatility. I think this is great for beginners. And a, a lot of the time, beginners would just post it online anyway, the photos. So it'll be completely fine. If you are a person who owns one camera and think we want to get into professional setting, I don't think this is it. You would want to have interchangeable lens camera. You'd want more versatility because there is a lot more lens choices that you can use and practice with. But if you're a person who has like at least like three cameras or just want to slow things down, get this camera. So my final thought about this camera is I do love this camera. I did mention in my one of my previous video I might consider selling it. I did at that point. But using this more and taking it out more, I can see why people love this camera. I can imagine myself when I go on a trip in the future, like if I go to back to Hong Kong, all I'm gonna take is this and my probably my Fuji X-H2 and my big lens. I don't have to care about like other lenses, which is so nice to have. And it'll be so much lighter to have because I know that, oh, if I'm not gonna take anything from really far away, just this camera is gonna be great enough. And if I really want to, I can just get the teleconverter, which can change this into a 50 millimeter focal length. And if you zoom in on that, it's 100 millimeters. So it's like, we don't really need anything else other than this. Yeah, I would highly recommend you to get it. It's something you will fall in love with even if you don't fall in love with right away. If you have any questions or want me to talk about certain things more about this camera, please let me know. Thanks, and I'll see you guys next time.